Okay, so we talked about parametric equations, and now we're going to take a look at polar coordinate coordinates. And this is where um, you see uh, vectors actually used a lot. Um, so we have a directed distance, and that's the x value of our uh, coordinate. And then the y value of the coordinate is that angle, the, um, the amount of rotation uh, around that um, that center okay and so our axes actually change here since we're no longer looking at x and y coordinates we're looking at r and you can kind of think of r as like the radius um it's that directed distance so if you went all the way around uh that central point you would create a circle uh with radius r which is that directed distance um and so so you'll notice that these graphs look a little bit different than what you're used to. So instead of having that rectangular grid, you have a circle, and this is called the polar coordinate system, or a polar grid. And um, so you have circles, and then you're, uh, you have these lines coming out uh, that show you the angle measures, okay? And so if you take a look at the first one, we wanna plot the given point three, so we know our radius or our directed distance is three, and uh, we are going negative pi over three. So if you remember, that's negative 60 degrees. So we're gonna come out here to three, but that's not where we're graphing our point, and we're coming down 60 degrees. So our actual uh, point is gonna be right here, and if you wanna graph that segment, you can, but the point is actually that green dot there, okay? Um, now for B, uh, again, we're coming out to 2, and then we're going pi over 6, which is the same as 30 degrees, so you're rotating that point 30 degrees, and so you're going to have this point right here with your directed line segment there. Okay, really pretty easy. Um, and then uh, the last one, uh, we have 2, so again, we're coming out to 2. And then we're going negative pi over 6, so we're going to go down that 30 degrees. And there is your point on that directed line segment. All right, let's take a look at example 2. Plot the point 2, 5 pi over 6. Okay, so remember that that is the same thing as 150 degrees. And then find three additional polar representations of this point. Um, using negative 2 pi is less than theta is less than 2 pi. So again, that's like negative 360 degrees and positive 360 degrees, okay? So we know we're going to graph 2. Ah, so we come out to 2. And then we're going 150 degrees. So we're going all the way down to here. And so we want to graph this point right here. Well, there are other ways we could graph that. We could first look at coterminal angles. Um, for five pi over six and see which ones are in between negative uh, two pi and two pi. So we could do five pi over six minus a full circle, which would be 12 pi over six which is negative 7 pi over 6. So again, we get negative uh, pi over 6, and if you want to look at that on the graph, you would come out to your 2, and then you would go negative pi over 6, and that would land you there. Okay, so that is one of your coordinates, 2, negative 7 pi over six. Okay, we're gonna take a look at a couple other ways, because if you were to add uh, five or um, 12 pi over six to the five pi over six, you would be past two pi, so that one, that one won't work. Um, but there are some others that would work. If you were to, uh, let's change color here. Um, we'll go with this light greenish color and see what happens. Okay, so if you were to go to negative two, you could go, remember that clockwise is a negative, so you could go negative pi over six. And so you would end up with negative two, negative pi over six as another answer, okay? And then something else that you could do, 
um, let's see, we'll use black this time. You could, you could still go to negative two, but then you could go the positive direction, right? And so there's three pi over two, and that would end up being, um, three pi over two would be right here. Uh, you would end up at, that's 11 pi over six radians um, because you're going counterclockwise, so that's a positive angle, but you didn't go quite all the way around. Um, you went 11 pi over six radians, or you could look at that as going 330 degrees, um, but from that negative two. So those are three additional representations for that same point, okay? Um, so again, you can look at these, uh, the, color, uh, the coordinate conversion, your R is like your X, your uh, angle measure, whether it's uh, in degrees of radians, is, is your Y value, okay? And so notice that they call the origin the pole. The X axis is now called the polar axis, right? Um, and so when you hear some of those terms or see them in a problem, that's what they mean. All right, so when we do our coordinate conversion, remember that our x value uh, on, the, on the unit circle was the cosine value. So you are just taking your radius and multiplying by that cosine value to get the x value. And if you are looking at the y, it's just r times the sine of theta because y was the sine value, and then r just tells you how far away from the origin you are. All right, so that's if you want to go from polar to rectangular, fairly straightforward. If you want to go to rectangular, from rectangular to polar, you find your angle measure by taking the tangent, because it's y over x, and then you can find your r squared by doing x squared plus y squared, and that should look vaguely familiar, because that is related to the vectors that we were doing um, previously. Okay, that also is like your Pythagorean theorem, um, so that's kind of helpful. All right, so we want to convert each point two rectangular coordinates. So we're going from polar to rectangular. So your x is going to be your r value, which is four, times the cosine of three pi over six, which is the same thing as pi over two. So if you want to simplify that, you are very welcome to. So you end up with four, and then cosine of, of pi over two, or 90 degrees, is just zero. So x is zero. And then when you do your y, it's four times the sine of pi over two, and remember that pi over or sine of pi over two is one, so it's four times one, so your y value is four, so your ordered pair is zero, four. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the second one. Again, x is r, which is two, times the cosine of your angle, which is pi over six, or 30 degrees. So we have two, and then the cosine of that was squared three over two. So you end up with square root of 3 uh, because those 2's cancel out. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then we find our y value, r times sine of our angle. Remember that the sine value of pi over 6 is 1 half, and 2 times 1 half is 1. So our ordered pair is the square root of 3. Oh, that should be equals. Uh, square root of 3, 1. All right, so now let's take a look at the last example. We're converting uh, two polar coordinates. So we're already in rectangular, and we want to convert it to polar. All right, so we take the tangent of theta equals 2 over 2. Well, if you think about it, uh, where is the tangent value 1? Uh, remember that you could, you could do this on the calculator if you want to, but you're not going to get um, an exact answer all the time. Um, so just be careful with that. Uh, but notice that your theta is going to be 45 degrees or pi over 4. Um, and then to get your r, that's going to be your x squared. r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And so 4 plus 4 is 8. So r equals the square root of 8. So r is 2 square root of 2. So then your ordered pair would be 2 square root of 2. And then your angle was pi over 4. Okay. Uh, now let's take a look at the very last one. So tangent of theta 
is equal to zero over negative one. Well, you could also look at where is that point. Um, and so hopefully you recognize that that is at pi. Um, and then r squared is equal to negative one quantity squared plus zero squared. So r squared is equal to one. So r is equal to one. And so your ordered pair is one theta. All right, so that is how you can convert from rectangular to polar.